It's just been announced at 7 o'clock that inflation has stayed at the same level last month, at 6.7%. Uh, That's despite analysts predicting a slight decrease today. And that deals a blow to Rishi Sunak's pledge to have inflation halved by the end of this year. Economic Secretary to the Treasury, Andrew Griffith, joins us now. Very good morning to you. Morning. Um, a disappointing uh, figure. What do you understand is the reason why it's sticking? Well, this is broadly in line with expectations. Uh, look, we always said it was challenging, uh, but it's the most important thing that the government can do is to reduce inflation, uh, to help people with the cost of living. Um, I think we're roughly on track to uh, achieve our target this year, but that's because of responsible and difficult decisions that we've had to take. Uh, going into the final quarter now uh, of this year, we will see some benefit in that final quarter from the lower energy yeah, price you're not, cap. You're not going to get it down, no. though, are you, to your target of halving? It's got to be around 5%. I mean, that's simply not going to happen. Inflation is going to continue to eat into people's pockets. Well, inflation does eat into people's pockets. You're absolutely right, which is why it's the single most important thing. We've, we've always been very clear, the Prime Minister's been very clear about that being one of the top priorities for us. Mm -hmm. Uh, now, we'll have to yeah, see... but we can't Susanna, even get I, on top of that. I, th I, th I, think, I think we will achieve that. Um, we're going into the final quarter, uh, the energy price cap... You think cap. it'll get down to 5% by Christmas? One of, the well, main reasons we'll achieve... gonna, one of the main reasons, apparently, you didn't refer to it, but it is because of fuel prices. I'm talking about petrol prices. I mean, I don't know if you drive a car and have to regularly go to the petrol station. I do. But I it do. is ridiculously expensive. And I'm not sure whether what is happening in the international scene mm. right now is going to make that any better. Uh, well, it's, look, it's, it's certainly not, uh, not going to help. Um, but we have seen fuel prices come down from where they are a year ago. As you know, uh, we've actually reduced the rate of tax on fuel to help hard-pressed households. Uh, we'll have to see. I mean, you seem very confident um, we weren't going to hit it. I'm confident most economic forecasters, not all, but most economic forecasters, including the Bank of England, do think we'll hit our target to halve it this year. But, but the most important thing is that within what we can control as a government, we are doing everything possible, uh, and that includes not coming out with unfunded promises to spend money, uh, and, yes, you know, not being able to, even as Conservatives who believe in people keeping more of what they earn, not being able to come out with uh, tax cuts at this moment okay. in time to achieve that target of uh, halving inflation this year because it's the most important thing that will right. help yes, your viewers that. up and down the country. What do you, what do you think is going to happen about the, the triple lock? It's been reported this morning that, uh, that, that Jeremy Hunt is, is considering whether to, to tweak it to cut the cost um, of pensions, and the way he's going to do that is to strip out bonuses from the, the calculation on pay rises so that he, he links it to the lower rate of pay rises, which means that, pe that people will get less. Uh, well, the triple lock and supporting pensioners is something that this government's got a terrific record on. It's really important. I know uh, pensioners really value that. Um, the, there's a process that gets followed from today. So we get today's uh, inflation number. That's part of that process. That happens every year uh, and over the coming weeks. Um, the Chancellor, the Secretary of State for Work and Pensions, the Prime Minister, will sit down uh, and look at that. So all, all we've got today is one of the inputs into that, which is today's uh, core inflation figure, which, as I say, I'm, I'm pleased is flat. It yeah, was always a challenging story, target. Sorry, you have got um, one feature of that. And the point about the triple lock is it goes... Uh, it means that the pension goes up with uh, wages, earnings... Uh, inflation or 2.5%, whichever is the Correct. higher. And it looks like earnings are the higher. But he's going to slightly tweak earnings so that they come down a bit, and that means that pensioners would lose money. So are you going to do that? Well, I, I, I remember precisely the same speculation a year ago and, and no doubt in previous years. It's, it's the nature of this that there's always speculation at this point. You will remember that last year, notwithstanding that speculation, pensioners received the highest ever uh, increase in the pension uh, over or around 10%. So, um, with, with the greatest respect, I think we should let the process run 
Uh, that can now happen because of today's inflation figure, which is one of the inputs into that process. Uh, and I'm sure the, my, my colleague, the pension secretary, uh, will be very happy to come and talk to you when that decision right. is made. We, we know for security reasons you can't confirm which day, but we do know that the Prime Minister is planning to fly out to Israel later this week. Um, what can he possibly say to make a difference to, to the horrors that are taking place out there? Well, look, first of all, let me just um, add my words to the devastating destruction of the Ali hospital that we saw overnight. We you know, all saw the, the very harrowing pictures on ITV News. Uh, and a priority for this government has always been the protection of civilian life. Uh, it's absolutely right that we will work with allies to try and find out uh, what has happened uh, and provide all of the support that we can, just as we've supported the, the people of Israel in the horrifying aftermath of the attack by Hamas to support the people of Gaza um, in, the, in the circumstances following this very difficult event. So in terms of the Prime so, Minister, you're, right, so, you're, you're, okay. you're absolutely, so, so you're absolutely the right. Say? So well, what would the Prime Minister say? Well, I think what the Prime Minister is doing is supporting all of the very, very significant diplomatic efforts across the Middle East, not just to uh, prevent any escalation into the terrible events that we see on our sorry, screens what every night. So, I'm so uh, sorry, also, I'm sorry but, to interrupt you, but, but what diplomatic efforts? I'm not aware of any diplomatic efforts taking place in the Middle East at the moment. It's a complete vacuum as far well, the, as diplomacy is concerned. The, the Prime Minister has spoken to President Sisi. He's spoken to uh, Prime Minister Netanyahu, to President Abbas, uh, to the King of Jordan. Uh, as you know, President Biden is, is due to land in the Middle East today um, and is part of... Uh, those diplomatic efforts. And, and that's not just the only thing we're doing. We've provided additional funding uh, to help humanitarian support uh, in Gaza, uh, working with the Egyptians to see if we can open safe corridors for both aid to come in uh, and for people to leave. Uh, and the Royal Navy has sent resources, okay. uh, put resources at the disposal of the region, both for surveillance and potential the, humanitarian the head, efforts. The head of the Palestinian mission to the UK, Ambassador Hussam Zomlot, uh, tweeted 12 hours ago, waiting for the UK government condemnation of this atrocious act of mass murder of civilians at the Episcopal Ali Hospital after being directly hit by an Israeli airstrike. But now, of course, Israel denies that is the case. But that is the head of the Palestinian mission to the UK. And that is the belief by a large number of people that this was a direct hit on civilians by the Israelis. What efforts are we putting in to finding out who was responsible for what happened yesterday because it was a sickening atrocity and holding them to account? Look, it, it, was, it, was, it was a devastating piece of destruction. We, we all watched those uh, harrowing pictures and our thoughts go out to all of those, you know, both, both, both in that particular incident, in other incidents... And those you utterly been, condemn it. Those, those who've had to, to leave their home. And, 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 and uh, of course, all, all of that human loss of life and, and suffering uh, is absolutely terrible. And now, what we've investigations we've also, we've are also, we doing to, we've, well, to find out who was responsible for that? Well, we, we will work with uh, our allies uh, and ensure that everything that can be done uh, to ascertain exactly what happened, where where any culpability lies, if it did turn um, out that we to, get if, to the bottom of that. If it did turn out to be an Israeli missile, it would it would devastate this government's support for Israel's actions, wouldn't it? Because that's the price. Well, protect up, upholding international law uh, is incredibly important. It's one of the things the UK does uh, in every theatre and in every part of the world with its its position of of, of leadership in, and part of the international rules based order. It, it's wrong to get into conjecture, and and this is a time when we should all choose our words responsibly. It will take time, inevitably, in in the fog of these things, uh, for the the true facts to emerge. But they should. Uh, and to the extent that the UK has any assets that can be brought to bear on, on what exactly happened, uh, then it's right that we put those at the disposal of our allies. OK. Andrew Griffith, thank you very much thank indeed. You. Economic Secretary to the Treasury.